All right, we're going to do... Hey, everyone, it's Chris here, and we're doing Chapter 4 of Hero. Um, as you can see, I bought some keys. <laughs> we're going to ignore that. No one needs... No. So I realized very recently that I'm going to need to change the ringtone on this phone, because it's going to be loud if, if uh, I get a text at any point. But no time to do that now. Let's just hope there's no text. Chapter 4, Suiting Up. You pick yourself up from the asphalt to smell a burnt rubber sting in your eyes. Damn, that guy sure can throw a punch. I'm almost glad he got away. The silence is split by the roar of an engine and a bright blue coupe skids to a stop in front of you. Need a left? Oh, Poppy and her rescue coupe. <laughs> a short while later, Poppy pulls up to the curb outside Prescott Industries and kills the engine. Uh, why are we at work? Dex has something special to show you. Come on. Poppy helps you out of the car and half walks, half carries you into the engineering lab at Prescott Industries. How are you feeling, Aiden? That punch looked like it hurt. You think? <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Poppy gingerly sets you down in an office chair and you sigh with relief. Thanks, Poppy. Of course. Will he be okay, Dax? Oh, totally. There's no permanent damage as far as I can see and you're too resilient for that. In fact, I'd say you're just winded. You'll be feeling better in no time. Easy for you to say. What was that guy? He looked like he was made out of rock or something. He definitely didn't look like that when he attacked the gala. No, he did not. The prison gate must have affected him too. Yeah, it's like the rubble somehow fused with his body. His skin was like stone and there was still shrapnel from the blast in him. So I know this is a serious threat that we need to deal with, but we have to brainstorm a name for this guy. Really, Dax? We need to know who we're talking about. Any ideas, Aiden? Srapnel. Srapnel? That's hard car. I love it. Can we get back to figuring out how to actually deal with this guy now? Please, Poppy. He has a name. Ugh, fine. Can we figure out how we're going to deal with Srapnel? He and his gang took off in a black van, headed east toward the bay. If we find the van, we'll know where they're headed, where they're holed up. For a group that size, they need somewhere pretty spacious. There are a lot of abandoned warehouses along the waterfront. Then, we'll, then I'll start looking there. Whoa, not so fast. You're not going out there without a proper suit. Especially now that we know just what Shrapnel's capable of. What's wrong with what I'm wearing now? Really? There's very clearly something wrong. I would never ask that. Well, for starters, it has absolutely zero defensive capabilities. And also a little low effort, I guess. I mean, if you're going to go after your first supervillain, you should at least dress the part, right? Exactly, which is why we're going to make you a new suit right here, right now. You can do that. This laboratory is equipped with the most cutting-edge tech this side of NASA, so yeah, we can do that. Eee, time for a superpower makeover! Your suit is the core of your superhero identity, it'll provide benefits in combat, unlock additional dialogue options, and even appear in cutscenes. And hell no, I'm not picking that one, that looks horrible. Um, but we are gonna go with the black, sleek look, dark and brooding, but like, it looks badass on me. Sleek, stealthy, and totally badass, I like it. Me too. Who doesn't love the bad boy look? By the way, Aiden, that mask has built-in audio, a camera, and an augmented reality heads-up display, so you won't need to wear that wristband and earpiece anymore. See? A holographic deck flashes up overhead, overlaid seamlessly with the lab around you. Whoa, that's, that's amazing. Now you can never get away from us. I mean, I could take my mask off. Dope! Secret identity, remember? I know, I know. Now, if y'all excuse me, I've got a bad guy to catch. Why did I get real country right there? Why did my country come out? So you're flying over the North Bridge, headed for the coastline. You look down to find a row of bandit warehouses along the bay, right where Dax said they'd be. I'm getting warmer. Just gotta find the, their getaway vehicle. You squint, searching the overground ground lots along the bay for a black van. Where are you hiding? You spot the van a few seconds later, half concealed under an awning, extending from a discrepant warehouse. Bingo, found him. You slip through a broken window and slept lightly across the warehouse rafters. Below you, three of Shrapnel's henchmen stuff bags with stolen diamonds and jewelry. That's gotta be them. <laughs> quite a haul we got here. Sure, but was it worth the risk? Every cop in the city has gotta be looking for us. That just means we're doing something right. Shut the hell up, new guy. This isn't a game. It's business. Go load up the van. Boss says it's time for us to move on. Nothing left in Northbridge for us now. 
And don't even think about filtering anything. Got it? It's just one single rock goes missing? Well, no. Fine. The guy in the letter jacket heads out to the van, leaving just two goons for you to deal with. Okay, now I count one machine gun and one crowbar, but you got to drop on them. You could try to fight them both at once, or you could stick to the shadows and take them out one by one. Play it stealthy. You toss a coin behind some shelves in the far corner of the warehouse. What was that? Better check it out. I'll watch the loot. Let me know if you see anything. As the first man walks towards the source of the noise, you follow silently along the rafters overhead. Anybody there? Now, ain't it? You drop down behind him, concealed by shadows. Huh? You knock him out with a single well-placed punch, punch just so he turns around. Just nice. Just one guy left. You crouch behind the shelves and wait for the remaining goon to get suspicious. Well, you see anything? Hello? That's it. Come a little closer. As the man's footsteps draw near, you leap out from your hiding place and drop him with a flying knee. Urgh. They're both out cold. I'll leave these two for the cops to start out. In the meantime, any idea where the big boss might be hiding? Uh, about that, Aiden? I don't think he's hiding. A massive shadow falls over you as Rapno steps out from a back room, his broad shoulders filling the door frame. Oh my god, his shoulders are so broad. Ah, I forget how... Oh my god, he doesn't look that muscular in like his headshot. <laughs> he really doesn't. See what I mean? He doesn't look that muscular. Back for more, huh? I figured you'd still be picking your teeth up off the asphalt. Let's see if you got yourself a fancy new suit. Maybe they'll even bury you in it. Before you can reach, reply, Shrapnel closes this in between you and launches... Before you can reply, Serapno closes the distance between you and unleashes a barrage of punches. Hiya! You duck and weave, barely dodging his attacks. Damn, this dude is fast for a hunk of rock. Wait, did you just call him a hunk? Really, Dax? Dax, Dax, stop. Can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to focus here. Time to tell your friends bye bye, because you're already dead. Serapno claps both hands over his head and brings it down like a hammer to an anvil. I should dodge. You sidestep Shrapnel's attack and his stone fist slamming into the floor with enough force to shatter concrete. Glad that wasn't me. Nice moves, Aiden. This is your chance, Aiden. Hit him before he recovers. You land your first punch of Shrapnel, your fist crunching into his jaw with enough force to send him a real eye. Ha, <laughs> not bad, kid. This is shaping up to be a hell of a good time. Plenty more where that came from. Come and get it. Sapno drops his shoulder and charges straight at you, lifting you off your feet and smashing you through a stack of crates. Ugh. Sapno lands on top of you and starts pulverizing your torso with rapid fire punches. Get up, Aiden. Try to roll him. With a mighty effort, you grab Sapno's harness and pull him to the side, rolling on top of him. What? Payback time. You punch him again and again in the face until finally the stone fractures. Rah! That's it, Aiden. You just have to break through the, that layer of rock. Sapno shakes you off and staggers to his feet, a visible crack running up and down his cheek like a scar. He drops low in to charge at you again, but this time you're ready for it. You grab him by the vest and slam him against a support column. Break through his face! You focus your attacks on Sapno's cracked face, shards of rock splitting off as you punch him again and again. This is for ruining my gala. This is so dumb. <laughs> no! It's working. Keep going, Aiden. And this is for putting my friends in danger. Okay, that's better. Finally, the stone mass shatters with the force of your last punch. Shrapnel leers at you with its face human once more. Go on, then. Finish it. And this is for my city. That was a bomb. Okay, that was a bomb last. That was good. That was good. That last line was good. This is for my gala. It started off real cheesy, though. Your punch shrapnel has enough force to destroy the support pillar, sending him hurtling across the warehouse. He slams against the wall and crumbles to the floor unconscious. It's done. Yeah, I don't think he's getting back up from that. You did it, Aiden. So what now? Do you see any sign of the prism crystal? Maybe we could bring Shrapnel back to the lab for questioning. Just then you hear the wail of police sirens and squad cars pull up, up outside the warehouse. Uh-oh. Forget it. Just get it, uh, yourself out of there, Aiden. We'll meet up back at your place. On it. You manage to fly away before the cops spot you, and soon you're touching down on your apartment's balcony. As you step aside, Dax pops open a bottle of champagne and Poppy pulls you into a tight hug. You did it! You did it! You did it! I'm so proud of you! Thanks, Poppy. Could you stop squeezing me so hard? My ribs are still a little sore from rest wrap, no beating the crap out of me. Oops, sorry. 
this hands you a glass of champagne. Of course, I'm loving this party. Uh, a big grin on his face. Congrats, Amy. You're officially a superhero. How does it feel? Honestly, exhausting. But also kind of exhilarating. There's so much adrenaline going through me right now, but if I lay down, I'm pretty sure I'd pass out immediately. We can't have that. We need to celebrate your first big win. Is that what we're doing right now? I mean, I brought champagne and everything. Why stop there? Let's go out and party. What the heck do you have in mind? Oh, you know, bonding, sharing secrets, doing shots. No. <laughs> Rain Jack, I really need to sleep. Come on, sleep is for wussies, right, Dax? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of running low on energy myself. It's been a long day. Especially for Aiden. Thank you, Dax. If only all my friends were so, so considerate. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. See you guys tomorrow. Okay, I guess I can be patient. Get some rest, Aiden. You did some incredible work today. Thanks. A half hour later, you finally started to drift off to sleep when your communications device lights up. Hey, Aiden, you awake? Sort of. Why? What's up? Turn the news. You're going to want to see this. You claim we're out of bed and fumble in the couch kitchen for your TV remote. You turn it on to see a reporter holding a microphone up to a young man with skin of gleaming bronze. Thanks, Steve. I'm here with what do you say your name was again, handsome? Sup, Northbridge. I'm Talos, the man of bronze. But I also answer to my hero. Your choice. You can sleep t tight from now on because I'm officially on the job. No matter where, no matter when, I'll keep you safe. That's a promise. Talos steps closer to the camera and waves a finger right at the lens. And to all of you criminals listening at home, you better shape up or we're going to have a problem. Got it? Well, I can certainly say that I'll be feeling safer from now on. Back to you, Steve. I'm the reporter. <laughs> I'm shook. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's so cute. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. The news moves on to the next segment, leaving you, Poppy, and Dax in stunned silence. Man of bronze? Who the hell was that? I don't know who he is, but he was really hot. <laughs> That's what you took from that? Honestly, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. <laughs> Wouldn't mind seeing him without all that bronze. In any case, it looks like the prison gate had an even bigger impact than we thought. Who knows how many more there are? I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead, you guys. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah, trouble is not all of them want to be here us. Oh my god. Meanwhile, in a cell deep in Northbridge prison. Well, guess you're right about me after all, ma. You always said I'd end up in the slammer. Shadow falls across the floor and Shrapnel looks up. You, what are you doing here? I am asking you the same question. Seems to me these films, these bars, couldn't possibly hold someone with your abilities. This is only temporary. Come on, I'll be long gone from here. So that's your plan, is it? Running away? What are you so afraid of? I... That's none of your business. What do you want from me anyway? I don't want anything from me. In fact, I want to give you something. Yeah? And what's that? Purpose. Dun, dun, dun. All right, that was the end of this chapter. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the Tarot Chapter 5.